Dear brothers and sisters, last night I had a dream that Trump was trying to make himself more appealing by putting something like ketchup all over his face. It wasn't working for me. So he washed it off and went to Ivanka's hotel room. She was putting mascara on, but it was difficult to apply and a bit clunky, so she got it on her face. I borrowed her lipstick, but it fell on the floor and the plastic cap was chipped and broken. I didn't think I had a suitcase, so I also asked to borrow her curling iron to turn my hair. But then I realized I had my own curling iron and it turned my hair much tighter. So now I'll do my best to interpret this dream. When I dream of red in my dreams, it usually represents Jesus' blood shed for sinners on the cross, hence the ketchup. Jesus died for the worst of sinners. However, they must receive his free gift of salvation, which just by its nature is admitting one is a sinner in need of a forgiving Savior. In my dream, Trump put the ketchup on his face to try to look more appealing, to try to appeal to an audience. In my dream, I was disgusted that Trump would use ketchup that way. When he saw it was no longer working for him, he washed it off and went to Ivanka's room where he made no reference to ketchup. Ivanka was wearing mascara, a mask, to cover up the chipped and broken words she would not allow to come from her lips. She was having a difficult time getting her hair or her heart to turn. My curling iron tightly turned my hair, for my heart is tightly turned always and only for Jesus Christ, my Lord and Savior, who is the King of kings, the Lord of lords, and the soon coming perfect and holy God, and the government will be on his shoulders. Then and only then will peace and healing be possible. Thank you, Jesus. You are our hero. Throughout the night, the lyrics, we don't need another hero, we're going through my spirit. I looked up the full lyrics of the song, and they're actually quite applicable. Out of the ruins, out of the wreckage, can't make the same mistake this time. We are the children, the last generation, the last generation, we are the ones they left behind. And I wonder when we're ever going to change it, living under the fear till nothing else remains. We don't need another hero, we don't need to know the way home, all we want is life beyond the thunder dome in heaven, beyond the sky, beyond the place where there's thunder, looking for something we can rely on, and that's Jesus. There's got to be something better out there. That's our Lord. Love and compassion, their day is coming, coming. So what do we do with our lives? We only leave a mark. Will our story shine like a life or end in the dark? I actually don't listen to a lot of music or even watch a lot of television or movies, so it's easier to clearly know when songs like this in my spirit are there as a result of the Lord's prompting. Much like in the days of Samuel, when the word of the Lord was rare and they were, there were not many visions, as explained in 1 Samuel chapter 3. Samuel heard the voice of the Lord so strongly three times that Samuel thought Eli was speaking to him. Much like Samuel, I hear a song or word in my spirit multiple times throughout the night and multiple times perhaps before sometimes I get it or before I get up to write it down, depending on how sleepy I am. <laughs> LOL. <laughs> The community of rapture-awaiting dreamers is probably larger than any of us can calculate. For more and more people are starting to have Joel 2.28 and Acts 2.17 channels on YouTube alone sharing dreams and visions regarding the last days as we await the appearing of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And what a blessed community it is. I had a dream that several of us were in the waiting room. Someone from the UK was there, a gentleman who was speaking with another gentleman. I moved over to talk to a lady from Arizona State University. We were all kind of moving around the room, talking to each other, and she had a, a red um, sweatshirt on. And then a lady wearing a red sweater was driving a couple to their destination, answering questions that they were asking her. It began to rain outside and the downpour grew stronger, but inside we realized what a rich community we had. And like actors and actresses, we all had a part to play. We all had different roles. Some were like teachers in an artistic classroom. Some were cheerleaders aiming to support the youngest to the oldest, the halls full of freshmen, sophomores, juniors, and seniors in the faith. But we weren't without problems. It was sometimes like going fishing in the Arctic. The love of many has grown cold, as we are fishers of men and women, and the comments can be full of arguments and complaints. Also, all of our channels are like living in different apartments or compartments, side by side, like A, B, and C. In my dream, someone in apartment C had a very large sign, and it overlapped apartment B. 
This can either be a blessing or become a burden if not handled delicately. In my dream, the lady in apartment B did not really like apartment C's big sign, but in the end, they had a great discussion about it and realized they shared things in common. In another part of the dream, two ladies were on an elevator going up to the top. Once they reached the top, it was considered the queen level, and one lady was so excited because she had the key that would allow her to go there. An older couple, however, was getting on the elevator, and they had many packages and many years of wisdom to go with them. A lady directing the elevator stops said we all needed to let the doors to the queen level close, so to speak, and travel with the older, wiser couple and unpack what they had to share. At the beginning of the night, the Lord put 1 Corinthians chapter 3 on my heart, which says, Brothers and sisters, I could not address you as people who live by the Spirit, but as people who are still worldly, mere infants in Christ. I gave you milk, not solid food, for you were not yet ready for it. Indeed, you are still not ready. You are still worldly, for since there is jealousy and quarreling among you, are you not worldly? Are you not acting like mere humans? For when one says, I follow Paul, and another, I follow Apollos, are you not mere human beings? What, after all, is Apollos? And what is Paul? Only servants through whom you came to believe, as the Lord has assigned to each his task. I planted the seed, Apollos watered it, but God has been making it grow. So neither the one who plants nor the one who waters is anything, but only God who makes things grow. The one who plants and the one who waters have one purpose, and they will each be rewarded according to their own labor. For we are co-workers in God's service. You are God's field, God's building. By the grace God has given me, I laid a foundation as a wise builder and someone else is building on it. But each one should build with care. For no one can lay any foundation other than the one already laid, which is Jesus Christ. If anyone builds on this foundation using gold, silver, costly stones, wood, hay, or straw, their work will be shown for what it is, because the day will bring it to light. It will, it will be revealed with fire, and the fire will test the quality of each person's work. If what has been built survives, the builder will receive a reward. If it is burned up, the builder will suffer loss, but yet will be saved, even though only as one escaping through the flames. Don't you know that you yourselves are God's temple, and that God's Spirit dwells in your midst? If anyone destroys God's temple, God will destroy that person. For God's temple is sacred, and you together are that temple. Do not deceive yourselves. If any of you think you are wise by the standards of this age, you should become fools so that you may become wise. For the wisdom of this world is foolishness in God's sight. As it is written, he catches the wise in their craftiness. And again, the Lord knows that the thoughts of the wise are futile. So then, no more boasting about human leaders. All things are yours, whether Paul or Apollos or Cephas or the world or life, or death, or the present, or the future, all are yours, and you are of Christ, and Christ is of God. Thank you, Jesus. Amen.